Hey guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Today's task at hand is we're going to see if we can put together a chainsaw from scratch. Lots and lots and lots of goodies in this oh, tool. Okay, let's be serious. First off, uh, some of you may remember these cases. I kind of cleaned these up and painted them at the same time that we done the cases for the Blackout 372. And what we have here is a pretty dang nice OE 365 Special tank handle assembly which is what those cases are for 365 special and what we have here is a really really nice about mint condition OE Husqvarna 365 372 crankshaft same crankshaft could be found in the John's Red counterparts or say a 2065 through 2172 you can fill in the rest of the blanks. Yeah, there's a new case gasket and looks like there's a muffler gasket in there from the Duke's Saw Salvage because I've used a lot of his gaskets. They seem to do just fine. And fresh out of the ultrasonic cleaner we have I would say about a mint 365 special cylinder. However, um, evidently sitting in the tow departs and getting moved and thrown around. Uh, some of the top fin is broken off but for what I plan on doing with this it's not gonna matter um, this may be a multi-part video may not we may just get it running as is but I am thinking I do plan on doing a uh, removable head off of this cylinder I have some lathe stock coming so I have a couple pieces coming for this saw and maybe one more smaller saw. I think the main goal for today is maybe to get the bottom end together and the tank assembly on it. I do have to put a fuel line in this and I've got to drive the bearings in the cases. I do have bearings in the freezer so I'm going to use a heat gun and heat the cases. It should help things go together a lot easier but uh, that is the goal for today, guys, and probably for this video, to be honest with you. And there you have it, guys. That flywheel side on these, as you can see it. Kind of goes down in there pretty good way and there's See, reason, reason behind that. That little sleeve on the crankshaft. Here's there. the bearings we are using in this build. I spent a little extra money on these, the Farmer Boss bearing. I don't, I don't know, they do feel a lot smoother than uh, the typical like 25 cent or 27 cent 6202 bearings I normally use from Farmer to it. But I don't know if it's any better or not. Um, I've never had any problems out of the other band. There it kind of fell in. And there we have it. She's in there. She's a little warm, but she's in there and spins freely. And before I forget, I saw it kind of bolts and screws from Farmer Tech or wherever you choose to buy it from for 365 372 saw. You don't try to heat the center of the bearing although we are using a heat gun it's not like you're gonna screw up anything and this is a metal cage bearing so yeah it should be okay. We hold our mouth just right and get this good and straight. Maybe, just maybe, chunk right down and in. And before we start heating up the other side, I'm going to put our gasket on. And I like to take some Modo Seal. And this is Permatex Modo Seal. It is not ultra gray. Do not get it confused with ultra gray. This is what you would use, say, if you wanted to put these together without the gasket. I've never done that. Um, 
A lot of ATV and dirt bike engines are that way, the older ones. I don't know about newer stuff. Uh, that's why it was invented to assemble engine cases. But I like to just put a thin film of that all around. Of course, when I get the gasket on and it's set into place good, I know some guys will take that gasket and let it sit and soak in two cycle oil. Uh, that's fine too. It may help it take shape a little better, but it's just me. I do this on every saw I build. Uh, I don't have the oven and the big freezer anymore that I had over in the other shop. Uh, not going to buy a big stand up freezer just to put whole case halves in so we've got our little mini fridge as a little freezer you can fit a crank in fit bearings in um, we got a pretty good heat gun or seems to be I've not had a problem out of it wife got that for me for Christmas a couple years back um, it seemed to Kind of do the deed and do it well, or do the job. <laughs> I'm gonna wonder if it was gonna fit or not. Um, whoever he's got cutting those out, the tolerances on them were pretty dang tight. So, what I'll do is I'll put another film on top of that and we'll heat the bearing up a little in the other case and hope that she goes right together as easy as that did. Alright rubber mallet here just in case things don't go our way. Alright, so we have six bolts in here. Unless we launch time, I'm shaky. What happens when you get old? Or older, I should say. And I like to tighten them in a crisscross pattern. Just like if you're doing a cylinder head or something. We got four inside and then two out here in the oil tank. Like a six bolt main. <laughs> Actually, it'd be like a Four bolt <laughs> Might not have been set all the way, but it's kind of still warm, so I right, bottomed out and we got one more right here. And if you see me doing that using two hands because I'm kind of shaky. And I've stripped a lot of stuff in my day, and um, it ain't a fine time. We'll just give them another snug. And once around, we'll move the other two. I just like to get those around that crankshaft first. That's just me. Because if everything wasn't seated down here in that area, like if your bearing was a little off, and it can be, so all you see guys will tap back and forth, and we may have to do that here uh, to get the crank set right, called setting the crank. Um, see so what wasn't set right and you start it out here say so maybe from here to here um, it is possible you could break something but this common knowledge as a builder tells me here's an engine builder to you know start and work my way around here I kind of knew that little bit she moved she'd be a little tight 
suit. Usually a rubber mallet. Let's see. So that's the top. Usually this side. Maybe not. We might have to get something a little more violent to whack it with. Some aluminum stock. I really should make a hammer out of one of those. Or I think as long as I've been doing all of this stuff, I would only, uh, there it is. It's that little whip, guys. She's spinning the three as can be. Cut these off. It will mess up your squish reading. Just take a razor blade knife and go in. If it's sharp, it usually kind of slices right off like so. Some people might not want to throw it in the shop floor, but mine is in bad need of some cleaning. Um, I've got a vacuum. Brooms and things out here about once a month. I'll vacuum and sweep and it takes about I don't know, working on two, three saws, it's kind of a wreck again. Seals, the one with the larger ID is going to go on the clutch side. The one with the smaller ID is going to go on the flywheel side. Right. Well, it is a steel seal driver. I'm going to drive a little bit and stop and have a look. Dang sure don't want to go too far. That looks pretty good. All right, and again, seal with the larger ID, which means inside diameter. There's no need to put any lube or anything on that one, not just yet. So it'll be a minute or two before it's fully assembled. I think that's the steel 066. It could be the one for the 024 through 036, but I think it's the larger 66 steel driver. All right, guys, that's how I assemble the bottom end. You have seen me do it differently, like I said, when I had the big oven and the big tall freezer in the other building. You could you could set a whole case half in that other freezer and get it froze in a couple of hours. And now the little freezer and the heat gun just kind of seems to do the trick but um, a lot of the times that crankshaft fits you know at a decent cool room temperature the cooler it is the better but you can heat those bearings up and it'll go right together which you know you've seen other guys do it uh, you can get the pullers uh, I've done it with shock press um, I've, I've assembled a lot of cases with the press but you are taking the risk of damaging the cases, breaking things. Um, this is what it is. I guess. Alrighty, guys. That's again. That's how I assemble the bottom end. I've done it different ways. I still do it different ways depending on what it is. Uh, there's more than one way to skin a cat. If there was something there I've done you didn't agree with, I'm sorry. I <laughs> just keep it to yourself. Uh, we need no negativity here on the channel. But with that said, I really appreciate everybody watching, commenting, subscribing. Uh, I don't know what we'll get into on the next part of this or when it'll even be. Um, like I said, I've got some 6061 coming. Uh, hopefully I got the right size to try to do a removable head on a couple of saws. It's just, some, it's just something I want to venture down that road and do. Um, I don't know, it'll be fun either way, and if we screw it up, uh, we screw it up, it's ours, but um, anyway guys, uh, thank y'all for watching, everybody have a good one.